Hyatt Cayman Reynolds. We got a lot going on around here. Fixing to pump 8,000 pounds of syrup and then a little bit more after that. And uh, But we're also having some fun. We got some cool videos on a cutout that we did. Also, this colony right here, it had a drone laying queen in December and we requeened it just a little after Christmas. I wanna leave that video if you wanna see how we did that up here. It was successful and they are growing. I'm really excited to look into this hive, but this bottom board, look at, they're going in the back here. This is an old bottom board I built myself. I was spraying them with my sprayer. It, it didn't get a good solid sealing coat and I've had a lot of rotting issues. Plus, I mean, this, this thing's lasted six or seven years and we've had more rain on record in the last handful of years than well, since they've probably been keeping records anyways, however long and whatever that's worth. So with that said, we're gonna be changing the equipment over and checking to see how the bees are doing. Plus you can see our, our new lids here and all that kind of stuff. Get a little bit of smoke down there. Woohoo! Bees are loving it today. It's cool, a little bit of sprinkling just stopped. It keeps coming on and off, but they've been bringing in a lot of pollen. Look at this right here, by the way. Look at this beautiful patch. A lot of people call this hen bit. I was told it was hen bit. This is actually dead nettle. Hen bit has a similar shade of flower, but it's a little bit different. But the bees get beautiful red pollens off of that. All right, here we go. Ooh, lovely. So I think they need some feed. It's warm enough. We're gonna be giving them some sugar syrup because they are just so light. You can see there's some pollen patty, and this is just a little bit of the winter patty. They work okay in a pinch, but it's not near as good as feeding some sugar syrup to your bees if they need it. And you know, if they had honey, well, that's even better because we don't have to do any work at all. All right, we're gonna start over here. Actually, you know what we're gonna do is I'm going to be actually moving them into this hive over here. It's, um, I know you're like, what in the world is that? This is an Afame, um kit, conversion kit kind of, and it's got an insulated lid. It's got a feeder set up down here. I'll be showing you in a second. And it's also got this, uh, this bottom board with a, it's all screwed in. The only way this um, makes some sense screwing it in like that is if you're running a single um, hive management system where all the broods stay in the bottom. Because if you're having to rotate your, your boxes, then you're not gonna be able to do that with this screwed in. But if you're moving bees, or you're using single hive management, that makes sense. We'll show you more in a second. Plus it has a, uh, a pollen trap in there, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to try it out. I'm gonna try out a couple types of pollen traps this year, and that way we can all see, because I think pollen is a very underutilized part of the human diet for nutrition and all that kind of stuff. And as beekeepers, we should be on the forefront of all that. All right, so there's a little bit of honey over here, but not much. Uh, you can see this is an old frame. There's uh, been a super procedure going on over here. This, I gave this to them from another colony, I believe, to help them with the food stores. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and get all this off of here. And between the two of these, it holds a gallon of feed up in here. I've tested it out already. I've been surprised how well it works. Uh, really pretty darn surprised. You wanna look in there real quick, Laurel? We're gonna take out this pollen trap because we're not gonna be harvesting pollen for any time. And then it's got a screen section down there and then you have your tray for observing Varroa or you can stick diatomaceous earth down in there. All that kind of stuff. Um, all right, let's get to the colony. But we are just going to basically take it out of that hive and stick it right over here. I'm gonna move this one more over to make it a little bit more convenient for myself. Temperatures in the 50s right now, Fahrenheit of course. A lot of pollen patty debris on the bottom. They were eating these pollen patties a lot and then we, the, we've we been really blessed with some awesome pollens. There's just a little bit of feed in there but not much. I mean, we're talking like enough to support 500 bees or something like that. All right, let's see if this queen's laying. There's a good bee coverage over there. I mean, I'm sure she, she is, but 
Oh wow, look at all that pollen. There's a little bit of nectar in there and I haven't fed them anything except the, um, the winter patty and the pollen patty, which I don't think would translate into that much nectar. I'm surprised, but thankfully, uh, whoops, there goes that. Probably should take those out. These bees definitely are a little testy. I, I promise you, if I would've got into them this morning, about 11 o'clock, when the sun was coming out a little bit, they would have been easier going. They were bringing in a good bit of pollen. I bet there's some small high beetles under here because, yep. Oh, look at that. Look at all that mess right there. I'm gonna throw that patty into something. It's not gonna kill the hive though. They'll just chuck them out. But the problem is, is then they turn into more small hive beetles. But the problem is, is the bees weren't consuming that because of all this pollen. So you have to really watch that feeding pollen patties. Oh, there's the queen. You see the red dot right there? Awesome. Yeah, the bees are testy. One just bumped the camera. We got some brood over here. Lots of pollen. I'm still, there's some cap brood over there. So There's a fuzzy bee. But look at the bottom board of this one here in a second. You see all the pollen debris and it's molding down there it's part of the problem with feeding pollen patties once they stop taking it they just start chucking it at the bottom and all that kind of stuff hey look at that right there look at all that brood so oh wow look down in there too it's just all the way down in there this hive is fixing to do some growing good bee coverage here and that's all because we saved this colony had we not checked in december now in some areas you can't check in december but had we not done that, we would have lost this colony. And we, what we did, if you haven't watched that other video that I left up where I pointed my finger, we took a queen from a very small colony. It was a mating nuke in September, and the queen came back, and we tried to overwinter as a three-frame colony. It probably ended up being about two frames-ish of bees, but we added it to what was left in here. We had to kill the old queen because she was just laying drones. Hive wasn't going to do anything, and we combined the two of them together, and now we have this right here. All right. We got more brood over here. I'm seeing some cat brood and stuff in between. This pollen flow is helping out a lot. The pattern's not the greatest in the world, but maybe that'll clear up here in a little bit. They don't have a lot of feed, and I as far as honey stores, and I think that's holding them back. I think that's really the, the biggest problem with this colony right now. You know, I forgot to get some, oh, there we go. Got some good frame of brood right there. Once all this brood hatches out and we get some nectar or some feed from us, this colony is gonna blow up. I'm seeing a little bit of, a little bit of larvae that look like they're having a little bit of issues. I'm going to check back on that. But have you guys seen a whole lot of honey? I haven't. That's a problem. That That's like almost completely empty. Uh, there's a lot of pollen in there. That's great. There's a little bit of eggs. And then we're going to... Ooh, they love it when you do that right there. It doesn't really happen when it's warm. We'll just take this box and uh, scrape it out. There's a little bit of nectar slash honey over here, but really it's not a lot. And it's not enough to sustain this colony going full throttle for very long. So that's where we're going to have to take measures and give them a little bit of feed. Now what we're going to do is just take this hive right here and just set it out. I'll have to scrape that bottom board. I'm actually gonna burn that one because it's it's really old. And yeah, so we have nine frames and a 10 frame box. I'll get my spacer later and then we're just gonna take this one and plop it right down in its place. And we gotta make sure the entrances up here are open. Yes, they are. So for a hive this size, you know, I don't know. 
honestly, I'd just keep it open myself, but we're going to reduce it down to one of these. Woo, I popped that and those piece are coming after me. So now we are going to, oh, we got a bunch of bees up here. That's one thing you should do, I didn't do in this video, is always check underneath your lid and make sure you don't have a queen there. If you have it, you know, if you have five boxes on for honey production and you have a queen excluder, it's really not that necessary because she should be down there, but it's always a good practice to check underneath your lids. But I've been really liking these lids with the rims here. It gives them a lot of head space so they can consume the patties quicker. But again, as soon as that pollen hit, pretty much the entire bee yard just stopped taking them, which is fine. We'd rather not have to feed them. It's a lot of work, it's money, and the bees do better on the pollen by far. Nothing beats good pollen. Sorry, Laurel. They really don't like that black shirt, do they? You'll forgive me, won't you? Maybe. <laughs> Whoops. All right, so now we're gonna stick those feeders on. And I'm gonna do another video on that. I forgot to bring the feed out. Whoa. Not in the mood today. It's just, the, it had a lot of storms come through. I don't know if that's what it is. It's funny, I promise you, you're gonna watch some videos. Get out of the way, B. You're still in the shot. <laughs> and I promise you, I'm gonna be doing this with probably out of veil at some point, but some days you can get away with it, some days you can't. And anyone that tells you differently, I really think is just trying to pull one over on you because you can hide a lot of stuff on YouTube. So this pops right down in there. And then this pops right down on that and it just fits right down into the hive and they really don't scoot around because they got some little things that hold them with a regular 10 frame Langstroth and then the, the hive lid is insulated and we have these right here and I want to just do a whole nother video just a short little two minute bee tip video on how to use these it's very simple but I don't have the syrup anyway so now we're just going to stick the lid on and now this hive is in a really nice box with an interesting setup. It'll be interesting to try it out. Um, if you want to see the Apple May website or whatever, I'll leave that in the comments below. And I've got one up my vowel, so we are going to cut this video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>